Hey guys, um, okay, I got a request about doing an underhood setup on uh, on the Truggy here. I think I covered the buggy a little bit. I'll try to get a little more into detail with the Truggy. Uh, as far as setup goes, I'm trying to run what comes with the kit, you know, the setup that they recommend. Uh, <coughs> it's probably Adam Drake's setup. Uh, the only thing I do a little bit differently maybe is the shocks just because every track is different. So I try to base it off of, you know, what track condition I'm running on. Uh, currently right now I think in the front is 42 and a half uh, weight oil with a 54 piston. Uh, you can see the, the black springs. Uh, in the rear for the shocks is 27 and a half weight oil with a 56 piston and the standard gray springs. Uh, as far as your camber and all your alignment angles go, whatever setup you're going to run, just stay on top of it. I mean, that helps you to be more consistent with the with the buggy, truggy, whatever it is you're running. Um, the more consistent your setup is, the more consistent of a driver you're going to be. Doesn't matter if you're just starting out or you know, 10 years into it. Uh, it's very important to stay on top of the setup. Everything from the droop, ride height, camber, toe, everything. Right now, this is the stock um, spindle and knuckle. They have the 12 degrees increase on the caster. I, I don't remember what the stock is. I don't know if it's 10, but uh, that, that kind of helps you a little bit. I mean, it, the, the buggy, will be, uh, truggy, whatever, will be more stable in the straightaways. Uh, I think that's the reason why <coughs> we were all upgrading to that. Uh, let's see, I think for the differentials here, I'm running a 7,000 weight oil in the front, 10 in the center, and two in the rear. Uh, the truggies are a lot more aggressive. They're very easy to drive compared to a buggy. So if you were running buggy for a while and you're thinking about getting a truggy, uh, you're going to be amazed. I recommend getting a truggy. I mean, it just it makes anybody feel like a pro driver. It's, it's just crazy how easy these things are and how forgiving they are when you run them. Uh, you know, you can if you get into trouble, the going joke around our track is if you get into trouble with a truggy, just punch it. It'll fix everything. <laughs> um, you know, as far as uh, servos and stuff go, it's usually the 7955s. I like to sacrifice. I know the 7955s aren't as fast as some other servos out there. But uh, you run an unregulated LiPo to a 7955. I know they're only rated for 6 volts, but trust me, they will take 7.4 volts, no problem. I've yet to have any issue with it. Everybody at the track, at my track, is doing it. Uh, so, you know, you'll be all right, trust me. Uh, this right now has an Orion servo in it. I have a 7955 on order. Uh, it should be getting here hopefully before next weekend and uh, throw that in. They do wake up a little bit, like I was saying before in one of my other videos. They go a little bit quicker, so that's kind of why I like to sacrifice uh, a little bit of speed for durability, reliability. Uh, I always like to finish a race. <laughs> so uh, I've yet to have any servo issues with the high tech. Um, the servo saver, you want to crank this down a little bit tighter than you would on a buggy just because everything takes a little bit more power to get the steering to, to move. So that's going to that's gonna help you out a little bit. Uh, you don't want to run it all the way down. I do recommend to Loctite it because the tighter it gets, when it vibrates, it's going to want to loosen up. So just a little bit of Loctite. I mean, not a lot, but just enough to keep it, keep it steady. And uh, just a little bit tighter. You know, uh, I wouldn't crank it down all the way. And then I do recommend to get the aluminum servo saver top. That's going to help it out a lot. I run that on the buggy. I don't currently have one on the truggy. It will be very soon. I think I have one in my box. I just have to swap it out. Um, you guys know when I'm running for an engine and pipe and all that. That's uh, That doesn't matter. Uh, you know, I run the P5. Nobody's really pulling away from me on the straightaways too much. Uh, that Your straightaways don't matter. You know, it's uh, it's all about corners in racing. Uh, the more consistent you can be in the corners, the faster you're going to be. And of course, slowing down. Uh, slow is fast. I know it sounds crazy, but you've got to take your time through the corners. You know, uh, it's always said the first, uh, the fastest lap you're going to be making is going to be the lap that you do not crash in. Uh, you know, if you learn to slow down and learn not to crash, you can gradually increase your your corner speed and all that and really start pushing the car you know it, it doesn't happen overnight but uh, 
that'll make you a lot faster. You know, then you can learn the limits of the car rather than just going balls out into a corner, crashing into the tubing. No, you're not going to learn that way. You just want to gradually increase your your corner speed until you know as far as the car can handle it. Then you're going to know the limits. You start doing that, practice that in every corner, I promise you, you're going to get a lot faster. Uh, you know, I'm still working on getting myself faster, of course. I think we all are. That's, that's all our dream is to be the fastest guy out there. It's the reason why we race. Um, outside of that, if there's anything that I missed uh, or you'd like to hear, comment below. I can, uh, I can comment back and help you guys out. Um, I think that's about it. Oh, the other thing, yeah. Uh, the lightened out drive. I do have the HD diff cases in all three um, differentials. I have the lightened out drives in the front, but the stock ones in the center and the rear. I do eventually will want to switch them out. Um, I just didn't have time. I wanted to get this thing going. Uh, it is almost the end of the outdoor racing season, so I just wanted to get this thing on the track and running it. Uh, what you see here, this here is just a little zip tie that I put. Keep the wires held up, you know, so they don't run against the chassis. I've had servos before ground out on the chassis, and trust me, a runaway is no fun. Um, outside of that, I think that's about it. I think I got everything covered. The sway bars, no, I didn't cover everything yet. The sway bars, I think I'm running two and a half millimeter sway bars, uh, but that also does depend on your track conditions. I think if, if you're if you're running a smoother track, you can probably get away with a stiffer sway bar. Uh, a looser track, you might want to get a little bit thinner sway bar. You know, you just kind of want the car to lean and maybe dig in a little more. Um, of course, if I'm wrong about anything, uh, let me know. <laughs> if, uh, if there's anything, anything I'm wrong, I'm not afraid to admit when I'm wrong. So, uh, you guys be the judge of that. Uh, if there's anything I missed, please, yeah, just let me know. Comment below, and I will try to answer you back. If there's anything else you want to know, there's no secret what I run for a setup. I want to try to help everybody be a little bit faster, a little bit better at wrenching. Uh, I'll have some of those coming up for you. I'm going to try later to do a tuning video. I know somebody else had requested about uh, engine tuning uh, to try to get a uh, idle down. So we'll, we'll try to work on that. I'll try to get that up for you guys later. So anyway, you guys have a great day, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching. Be sure and subscribe.